Welcome back to Parenting Roadmaps. This is episode number 19, and I'm looking forward to bringing us full circle in these last two episodes of this video series. The goal of Parenting Roadmaps is to be there to support you along this journey with your child, offering insight into child development, to keep you engaged in this journey, and to be aware of all the many ways you can support your child's development. A quick request, if you, a parent or educator, are watching this video in May of 2021, I would really appreciate you taking three to five minutes to complete a survey, even if this is your first episode. I would greatly appreciate your input and feedback. You'll find the link to the survey in the description below. I'll be continuing Parenting Roadmaps in the summer of 2021 and branching out a little bit into some other social media platforms while continuing this YouTube channel. And I plan to bring a second preschool series in the fall of 2021. I really want to create teaching moments that are helpful and meaningful for parents, which is why your input is greatly appreciated. Now back to this week's episode. Throughout this first video series, we've touched on a few classic activities for the preschool years. Play-Doh, playground, and puppets, all wonderful examples of how an activity can support growth in all the domains of childhood development. None of them are expensive and hopefully they're easily accessible to you. With today's episode, I want to add one more to that list, rhyming. Parenting brings enough challenges, and I think it's important to celebrate what's easy and simple, and rhyming checks both of those boxes, making any time a good time to rhyme. It's time to rhyme. I thought I'd take a look at rhyming through the lens of each domain. We won't be able to cover all the benefits of rhyming, but I think we will highlight enough for you to see how rhyming with your child can be so beneficial. The speech and language domain. Remember phonemes from the last episode, the smallest unit of sound? Rhyming helps kids develop the ability to hear the difference in those sounds. The ability to hear the difference in those basic sounds is one of the beginning skills needed to read and write. Also, children need to repeat saying things to develop their speech and language skills. Children's poems are often enjoyable, silly stories for kids that are easy to memorize. So saying or singing these poems out loud is a fun way for kids to practice their speech development. So when you've heard wheels on the bus for the hundredth time, take a deep breath and just remind yourself that this is a really good activity for your kid. Second, the cognitive domain. Children's poems and nursery rhymes are typically short and have a pattern to them that make them easy to memorize. Developing memory skills is a key part of the cognitive domain. In addition, these poems often tell a story, albeit a quick one, but they introduce children to the concept that a story has a beginning, a middle, and an end, a helpful skill for developing sequencing and comprehension. Nursery rhymes in particular are a wonderful way to introduce children to new vocabulary that they might not hear in everyday conversations. Meadows, wool, fleece, fetch, clocks striking one. I think you get the idea. Next, the physical domain. Many nursery rhymes and poems are fun for kids to act out. Kids and nursery rhymes are both active and silly, a perfect match. Finger plays are another entertaining way to act out poems and can help develop the fine motor skills in hands and fingers. And think about the classic pat a cake. You can clap the beat to many poems or turn them into hand clapping games. And I hope you haven't forgotten about the importance of crossing the midline. And lastly, the social and emotional domain. Children's poems are often funny and silly and are a wonderful way to teach humor. Some poems encourage call and response, and this allows for everyone to join in and participate. And as we've mentioned, poems and nursery rhymes can be acted out where everyone can play a part of the story and take turns. Two simple ways to add rhyming into your everyday life. If you've been watching the entire series, I think you know by now that I'm a pretty big fan of being silly. It's fairly easy to make up silly songs and poems while doing your everyday activities. Use a tune to a song you already know. You don't have to sing well, and the sillier the song, the better. So feel free to add in some made up rhyming words. Second, when you head to the library, look for books written in rhyme. And remember, repetition is key. Once you've read it enough, see if your child can remember what the rhyming words are. 
in life, including parenting, we often find ourselves thinking that to do something right, we need to spend more money, spend more time, make some sort of big investment. And so my hope is that this video reminds you that to do parenting right can sometimes be simple and basic. And why not live into that? There's enough in life that is challenging, so don't forget to enjoy what can be simple and basic, like rhyming. Remember, any time is a good time to rhyme. Next week is our final episode in the series, so please tune in. And as a quick reminder, the link to the survey can be found in the description below. Thank you for taking a few minutes to complete the survey. And as always, remember to enjoy the journey.